The Imagine Arts and Older People program is a three-year project, a partnership led by City Arts, Nottingham City Council and the Abbeyfield Society. Many of us take for granted our easy access to the arts, but for older people this is not always the case. The aim of the programme was simply to develop strategies to improve the situation. The Armchair Gallery has been a great success, a collection of specially commissioned, inspiring short films, taking a closer look at a wide range of artworks, such as those found in Chatsworth House in Derbyshire and the Dulwich Picture Gallery in London, as well as several other important collections. These films were all made to be easily accessed from iPads, kept in the care homes, and were used as a starting point for a series of creative workshops involving the residents. One of the Imagine programme's creative partners is the Nottingham Contemporary Gallery. As part of the programme, the gallery played host to several visits by care home residents, providing even greater access to the arts. The exhibition by Pablo Bronstein gave visitors a chance to see some of Chatsworth's treasures grouped together in a different and sometimes challenging way. A chance to view objects presented in a manner not normally given to the regular visitors to Chatsworth House, sparking much discussion amongst the residents, some of whom remembered seeing the artworks during their own visits to the house in years gone by. On another occasion, two different groups visited the exhibition by Simon Starling. Starling often uses stories as the basis of his work. Oh. The Alchemist Discovers Phosphorus, I think that's the title. We've borrowed this from and in this exhibition, it was the process of the transformation of materials which was the inspiration for these particular exhibits. Does anybody know what an alchemist does? Yes, he changes metals. An alchemist. Yeah, he's changed. What does an alchemist do? Like a chemist, isn't it? Yeah, it is like a chemist, like changes metals. And what they're looking for, of course, they were trying is. trying to produce gold. Yeah, they, they, were to do. they were trying to make money, basically. Simon Starling's artwork is all about this process that materials can go through and change from one thing to another. So every they were guided around the galleries by Joe Dackham and Gillian Brent, know, both artists you themselves. Gillian is a sculptor and installation artist based in Sheffield, who has worked with the learning team since the gallery first opened. We had a good look at the Simon Starling exhibition. And we talked about some of the ideas that Simon Starling has been developing. And about how he uses material and how he uses stories in history. Made of metal. Yes, it's made of metal. It's made of magnesium, which is a kind of metal. Yeah. So, in these tanks is water that's been taken from the Dead Sea. Oh, yeah. So, in those tanks are water from the Dead Sea, so it's got this very high content of salt, which I think is magnesium chloride, is the chemical name for the salt. Now, magnesium is also a metal. So you can extract from the seawater, from the salt, you can extract the metal. And that's what this boat is made from. I think they were quite engaged with the idea of the boats, and they recognised them, but they were interested in the stories behind them. You got to go to China to be soldered because they couldn't find anything in England that would solder magnesium together. And didn't they have to bring the workmen as well, didn't they? Yeah. All these workmen. Because it was proper there. canoe, because it had got a seat yeah. in one side, mm -hmm. where the one would, and the seat the other side, where the other, other oars would have been. Mm. So the story behind this artwork is originally there was a gallery, an art gallery, and it had a wooden cabinet. He took it to pieces and he made it into a boat. He then took this boat and went on a fishing trip in the lake 
and caught these fish, but he burnt his boat to cook the fish. And so this is the remains of the boat. Once he'd done all that, he took everything that was left over from this journey and he put it back in the gallery where the cabinet used to be. <laughs> so it's a sort of big circle, yeah. And how trade and manufacturing has moved, because a lot of manufacturing that we used to have here, with, like, with the lace, is now made in China, isn't it? As the residents explored the rest of the exhibition, they were constantly reminded of Starling's stories of transformation. They came face to face with strange, amorphous sculptures, flecks of silver now magnified many thousands of times bigger. A cacophony of industrial sounds contrasting with the melody of the pianola, played by some invisible pianist. The perfunctory, perforated punch cards of the lace machines now transformed into a different rhythm. After seeing the exhibitions here at the gallery, each group would take part in a follow-up workshop, led by the artist who had shown them round. My daughter and I did it together and it was Chatsworth. That That's was what right. we did, yeah. we did Chatsworth. And all this lovely coloured painting and all the little turrets and everything, and she cut them all out. We were given a box and some wrapping paper and we wrapped it up and wrapped the lid up and fixed it together. And I still got mine. I brought mine back. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and make a fire. <laughs> Echoing some of Starling's sculptures, Joe Dackham chose to explore some familiar items in more depth, quite literally, looking at them under a digital microscope. In 1898, the Great Central Railway was built here. However, Gillian Brent took a different approach when it came to exploring the creative potential of the exhibition. Does anybody else know where the key belongs? She made everyone in her group into archaeological detectives as they solved clues as to the history of the site. And inspired by Simon Starling, the residents did some transforming of their own, using mylar and wadding to create abstract sculptures. Modern galleries often lead the visitor to question their ideas of what makes good art. In fact, is it art at all? So how did the care home residents respond to their visits to Nottingham Contemporary? I think some of the concepts behind the work, they found a little bit hard to grasp, but they weren't closed mind about it. They didn't say, well, I'm not interested. They thought about it and they considered it. They did really listen and think about it. You looked at it and you thought it was the soldiers on parade on the Queen's birthday, you know how they all come out yeah. on parade, how they're all there and all this in the huge square and it just looked like that, looking at these balls as though they were all standing to attention. It shouldn't only be about reminiscence, it should be about the here and now and I felt it was really good because they were responding to elements of the artwork purely for the experience of that moment and I think that's just as important as it is about triggering memory. So that was what the tea service looked like and then it's been flattened. Sometimes people do go, oh, that's not art. And I was warned beforehand that people would say, oh, I don't think that's art. But nobody said that. Nobody, they believed me when I told them. I said to her, I said, oh, does it feel strange, you know, an art, an art like this? And she said, well, no, not strange, but different. Oh, that's really, really good. good. That's they didn't have to understand it or make personal links. They just enjoyed it for what it was. Perhaps that's what these visits do best, combining the familiar with the new, allowing residents to reminisce about their past 
whilst making new memories for the future. Yeah, I think so. Don't you? Okay. But it's all part of being part of the world and feeling that they, they, they're not cut away from the rest of society, that they can come into a place with other people and be part of what's going on now and not just live in the past or just live in their care homes, isolated from the rest of us. Whether it's through the armchair gallery films, organising creative workshops or gallery visits, the Imagine programme has always sought to enrich the lives of older people by providing access to as wide a choice as possible when it comes to the arts. After all, it could be said that it is only through choice, having the ability and opportunity to choose, that defines and makes us and reminds us who we are as individuals.